All right, Mandy, we're back. We're going to have to go tomorrow. They'll be able to go tomorrow. I just have that girl coming today, and it would just be too much. Try to go out, get back, and then have somebody coming over and all this, that, and the other. For me, it would be too much. I can only have one person. I can only deal with one person a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you got that part, Mandy. We have to go tomorrow because that girl's coming today and uh, Quay will be here tomorrow. So he'll be walking the dogs and stuff. Uh, and we can just go to that Home Depot. And he needs to see. It is a bossy dog. And, you know, I don't want to have to task you with just being this expert handler. We've got to condition the dog as much as possible. We have to believe that it can get better and better and better. Uh, but I don't ever want you, you know, at this point, it's, it's you're not going to start walking around in neighborhoods. You don't have enough control over the environment and his reaction to things. That's where you're getting into trouble. It's not that he's, you know, my concern would be, and this is what people always tell me happens to them. Oh, some little dog got loose and ran up to their dog. And, well, it wasn't good. And regardless if that does happen, I'll tell you, what you don't want is something happening. Which he was very, very good with the puppies, but let me tell you, I was totally handling him and doing all that. Obviously, he can't be without the collar. And he doesn't mind the collar. So, I've got my... And I do, I, I could see, I could see, Mike, where you could even do it where... The vibration would be the same, but you could change the sound or add augment or something to that sound if you wanted to. I know that's, oh, that's, you know, like when I asked him to make, when Sport Dog, when I asked him to make that sound box, we're decades away from this kind of tech lady. <laughs> then they told the office staff, get rid of her. Decades away from a sound box? Yeah, that was their take on it. So I'm saying to myself, I don't want to start things off the wrong way because this dog will start, try to boss me from the very first second by trying to keep me from getting the leash on or trying to take hold of the leash and grab the leash and do all these things. And if you said, well, when it was a puppy, it just thought it was more of the games. Yeah, yeah, that's what it thought. So that's the problem. You know, if, you, if the game involved fighting, now I put the leash, I decidedly look away from him too. If the game involved fighting, well, no fighting is going to su successfully get rid of it. So I don't want you using the thing, but what this dog understands is at the end of the leash, is it breaks. It breaks, you know, it breaks. So just break it. Throw a lot of force into it, and it'll rip out of their hand or whatever. You better not pee right there. I'm going to tell you that right now. And you do have to be, if you are going to be corrective with this dog, if it starts peeing up around by the door and stuff, I want you to go after it because I had that one dog, Dallas. I had to make up a new command. Keep it moving. I've never seen it with your urine. It was neutered, too. All right, so I've got my treats. Like, what? And I'm going to get my leash on seamlessly as possible. And I do think you should present, and that's where we're at with this dog, is making the dog very equipment biased. So I am presenting it as a singular piece of equipment. And I, you know, if he wants to hit the end, he's got 16 feet to do it, not six. But the look and everything he's got right there, Mandy, that's what we want. And you know what I'm talking about. He's capable of that very smarmy little head shaking look when he's got something. Or the other warning sign with him is when he's got something, he's going, chop, chop, chop. You know, you, you, the action that you need to take then is not to try to get it away. He's already fortified against that. If the other dogs try to get it, oh yeah. So I'm just gonna use very subtle commands. I'm rewarding out of that turn. I'm ready though, boy, if he wants to hit the end. I'm not trying to get him to go on the platform on his own, but. You're just, at that point, we've already said bend back towards the hand. The reason this thing is good is you can kind of go like that. If it had a little thing on there that said stop, then I could tell, ah, oh, look, Mike, this one I could tell the people. Put the stop sign in front. Give them, show them the stop sign. The stop sign, the stop sign. Am I wrong? It's perfect. 
So this is basically the lead lining, but the stop sign, the stop sign. Oh, he's backing up. Okay, hang on. any reaction but I did make a mental note and that's what I think you have to think of with a lot of things oh how do I correct that now make a mental note come up with a game plan don't try to instantly correct things okay. so this is kind of a transition between the lead lining don't you think Mike and the normal leash because there's a very limited way that you can hold this obviously if you know you don't want to keep, and it allows the dog to lay down without still any tension. And look, there's a little black thing right there. Put your foot on the black thing, and you do. He needs to see that from you, Mandy. But that's just a posture. No, no, he's chewing the black thing. Now he's playing footsies. I decidedly look away when he does that. That's what they do. They just start looking around. That's what they do. Squirrel? Not even a squirrel. All right, so I go this way. And he sees, I, got, I don't have the brake on. Heel. Heel. I do add the commands here and there. If it's a little bit of height reality. In this hand, we really, Mandy, you've got to get in the habit of you know, if your arms are straight and you just slightly bend them, that's all it is. Your arms are straight, you're slightly bending them up. It's kind of like power walking. Stop sign. But you've got to put some, I, you know, I think I understand that, Mike, with that turn towards, you know, if they're not putting anything in front of the dog. If I don't have the thing, I'll put the remote in front of them. I'm already looking at the platform. So I think you've got to kind of have that. That's a more honestly. I really, and I don't recommend. There was some woman had a thing on Facebook where the leash got caught around her kid's neck. And so she, now she's suing. Here's an idea. You know, keep your kid's neck away from the leash. It's just, Oh, yeah, the kid had like a all the way around the neck. Oh, look, he's going to bring me this blanket now. All right, let me go grab my dumbbells. But, you know, that was good, and that's what he's got to think of. Once that leash is there, there is a decorum, and there is an end to it. It's not just something you rip out of our hands. Or, nor, and that's what you've got to think of. Nor is it something... No, I'm awful. I'm awful. Nor is it the source of corrections. If I'm doing anything, I'm driving him forward. If you said how? By going. Just by going. I'm not looking at him. You know, and I'm leaving it to him. I am adding the pager, but if, I re if he really wasn't paying attention, I'd say, heel! Heel, you son of a gun! Keep that command in mind, Mandy. For Carl, not the dog. So he's lead lining very, very nicely. And that's half the battle. If you get them out and they are looking at everything but you, and then you start correcting them, I'll tell you what that makes you not more likable, not more wanting to be with, you know what I mean? It makes them think maybe these other people are nicer than them. Skylar. If not, if I didn't have a Skylar, Mandy, this dog would freaking see a new dog 
and he already does to some degree, but he wouldn't be able to handle it. All the training in the world with no other dogs around wouldn't help when there was another dog around. All right, let me get the... So that was very, very good, and I think he's going to do good tomorrow, and we're going to... Uh, we'll go in the back and just hang out get coffee and stuff just set up you know just set up the set there it'll be great it'll be like a talk show you saw that they had that really cute set unless they've torn it down they do they do switch stuff up in there and we'll find somewhere um or you can go in first and scout locations i'm not sure what time girl it just with you know having to load them up and stuff it's hard for me to say an exact time but I'll try to get up get them in there because if we go there early there won't be as many freaks but I'm sure you know that place is like some kind of freak show uh, so we'll try to get there early so I'll just text you in the morning when I think I'm just I mean hopefully I can get out of here by like 830 unless that's too early for you if it is, then I can train a couple of the other ones. I'm just going to bring him, Casper, Pre, and um, maybe... Oh, the puppies, the puppies. All right, girl. Hi, Lanny. I was thinking about you, girl. I didn't know what you'd been doing. I hope you've been trying to train a little bit, girl. Anybody can do this. You don't need an electric collar. You could get the dogs at the daycare picking up these dumbbells and stuff. You could. You could. And if you said how, just copy exactly what I'm doing. That's the only thing I can tell people. For whatever I'm doing, it works. All right, guys, I'll be right back.